In this video, I'll go over a method for calculating the total resistance of circuits that you'll see in Physics 100. So the example that I'll be working with is actually a fairly complicated circuit, but uh, that's just for you to see that this method will work with any circuit that you'll see in this course. And just for simplicity, all of the lamps in the circuit are going to have a resistance of 1 ohm. So to solve for the total resistance here, the first thing you have to do is highlight all of your junctions. And what I mean by a junction is basically anywhere in the circuit where at least two paths join together into a single path or a single path divides into at least two different paths. So I'm going to do that right now. When you're doing this, you have to watch out for corners because in circuit diagrams, there will be corners like this one here that might look like junctions, but they're actually not because there's only one single path. So you should avoid marking those as junctions. Okay, now that we have all of the junctions highlighted, solving the circuit is pretty much like solving a math equation with a lot of brackets in it. So you'll have to start with the innermost junctions and work your way out. Identifying the innermost junctions is actually not that hard. They normally look the simplest, like this one here. But sometimes it might not be as easy to find that. So I'm going to show you a method that you can use to figure that out. So in order to find one of the innermost junctions, what you have to do is pick any junction that you think might be one of them. So I'm just going to pick the first one right here and then follow the path that the current will take when it gets to this junction. So current is starting from the positive side, which is here. It's going to enter the junction here. And then it's going to have four different paths that it could go through. And I'm just going to highlight them with different colors. And what you have to do is follow the path until you reach another junction. So I'll follow this path until I reach that junction there. Then I'll follow the second path until I reach another junction. This is the first junction I reach. Then same thing for the third path. And then again for the fourth one. Now you have to look to see if any of these paths that you've colored form a loop. And you can see that the green and the yellow do form a closed loop. So that loop is one of the things that you can simplify first. Now, if you had picked the wrong junction, you might not have gotten any loops at all. So you would have had to try with another junction. But now I found one loop, so I'm going to simplify this loop over here first. To calculate the total resistance of the loops that you find, all you have to do is uh, go through every single path to add up the resistances that are in series and then add up the resistances of all of the paths as parallel resistors. So in this case, both the yellow and the green path have only a single lamp, so there are no resistors in series. So all I have to do is use the formula for parallel resistances to add up the resistance of the yellow and the green lamp, which will just be 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1. So the total resistance of that loop in that case is just going to be 0.5 ohms. So now you can replace this whole loop with one single lamp that has a resistance of 0.5 ohms. So now I've uh, just replaced the old loop that we had with this new yellow lamp, which has a resistance of 0.5 ohms. Now we can continue the process of highlighting the path. Again, I'm just going to do it with the same junction as before. And uh, really, it doesn't matter which of these opening junctions you start with. As long as you find a loop, you can go with it. If not, you just move on to another junction. So I have this one and this other path. Now you notice I only have three possible paths this time since we simplified our circuit. 
And now you can see that the yellow and the blue are forming a loop, but the difference this time is that each path has multiple lamps. So first we have to calculate the resistance of every single path, and since they're in series, we just use the formula that R total is the sum of all the individual resistances. So for the yellow path, it's just going to be 0.5 ohms plus 1, so 1.5 ohms. And for the blue path, it's going to be 1 plus 1, 2 ohms. Now that we have those, we can find the resistance of the loop by using the formula for parallel resistances. So the resistance of the loop is equal to 1 over 2 plus 1 over 1 1.5, which is really 1 over 3 over 2. Then R of the loop is 6 over 7 ohms. And that means that we can replace this whole loop with a, another lamp that has a resistance of 6 over 7 ohms. Now I've simplified our circuit even more by replacing the loop that we had with this yellow lamp which has a resistance of 6 over 7 ohms. Now take a moment to answer this question. The correct answer is F. Now let's see why. Here you can see that we can no longer work with the old junction that we had because if you follow the path, you can see that there are no loops. So we have to move on and work with another junction. And well, you can see we can work with this opening junction here. And you can really see the path. There's this one that closes with that one. You can even work with this junction over here since you'll have this one path and this other path there. And that also forms a loop. I'm just going to work with loop number one first and then move on with loop number two. So to simplify the resistance of loop number one, you can see that each path has only one lamp in it. So we can jump into calculating the resistance of the loop using the formula for parallel resistors. I'm just going to call this loop one. That is one over one plus one over one. That's two. So the resistance of loop one is just a half. So that would be this loop here as resistance of 0.5 ohms. For uh, loop number two, the pink path has three lamps. So we have to find the resistance of that path by adding all of those up. So that's one plus one plus one, three ohms. That'll be for the pink. And then we can get the resistance of loop two using formula for parallel resistances. So that will just be 1 over 3 for the pink one and uh, 1 over 1 for the green one. That's just 4 over 3. So R of loop 2 is just 3 over 4 ohms. And uh, that means that we can replace this first loop with another bulb which has resistance of 0.5 and this second loop with another bulb with a resistance of 3 over 4 ohms. Okay now I have replaced uh, two loops with these orange and brown bulbs with different resistances and you can see we're only left with two junctions which form two clear paths that together form a loop. So now all we have to do is to calculate the total resistance of each path and then add up their resistances. Now take a moment and answer this question. The correct answer is A. Now let's see why. For the blue path, we have 0.5 plus 
3 over 4, and that's just going to be 5 over 4 ohms. And the green path only has one bulb in it, so its resistance is just 6 over 7. Now, to get the resistance of the loop, we use the formula for parallel resistors with R of B and R of G. So that's going to be 4 over 5 plus 7 over 6. So the resistance of the loop is just 30 over 59 ohms. Here I've replaced our final loop with this new green bulb, which has a resistance of 30 over 59 ohms instead of 1. And uh, now you can see that we no longer have any junctions left. So all I have to do is add up the resistances that are left since they're all in series. So R total is going to be equal to the R of the green plus R of the white bulb, which is equal to 30 for 59 plus 1. And so 89 over 59 is our final answer, which is the total resistance. So now you can see that even with the fairly complicated circuits, you can solve for the total resistance without being confused by how the circuit is drawn by thinking of the junctions and simplifying the circuit piece by piece.